Well, severe weather firing up again tonight. You can see a tornado reaching down to the ground in Canadian Texas. This has been a hot spot for storm chasers tonight, and we're likely to see those storms continuing to fire up. Thanks for joining us here on Weather Center Live. I'm Keith Carson. And I'm Alice Wallace. Now, it's not only the active severe threat that we're covering, there are also ongoing search and rescue efforts in Texas. This all after Monday's catastrophic flooding. In fact, this is what we are talking about. Homes still underwater, the flooding beginning to recede, but not quickly enough. You can see some of the uh, areas here in these homes having the issues there. Uh, we had water, uh, just devastation all over the place. Bridges washed out. It's going to be a lingering problem for infrastructure as roads and bridges will need to be rebuilt and repaired. Even agriculture, clouds trying to navigate some of the rivers which were once there, fields in the Houston area. Yeah, what a nightmare. Here's the very latest information that we have right now. 23 people have died in these storms, 16 in Texas and 7 in Oklahoma. 10 people in Texas are still missing. And the town of Wharton, Texas is calling for voluntary evacuations on the west side of the city that is ahead of the rising Colorado River. All right, for the latest on the storms right now, let's go to Mike Bettis in the lab. All right, guys, thank you very much. Uh Looks like we probably have in some instances tornadoes indeed on the ground. Texas through Oklahoma and up into Kansas we have issues right now. There's a look at the radar and things really lighting up for us here, especially from say Amarillo up toward Dodge City. Multiple threats here. Not only do we have tornadoes, but the possibility of large hail and a lot of these storms as well as a flash flood risk because many of these storms are moving incredibly slowly. So almost stationary in some instances. So uh, right now Hemp Hill and Liscombe County is under that tornado warning. It's been sitting near Canadian for what seems like a about an hour and a half, maybe two hours almost. It's barely moved. This is a look at the velocities. Green and red next to each other is not a good thing. That implies that we have a rotation in the clouds, and that may mean a tornado at least near the ground. This may be shooting up a little bit high in the clouds, may not actually be looking right down near the ground. And so there's rotation at least higher up in the storm, but we have had and we've seen pictures of a bigger cone tornado uh, near Canadian. Right now, looking at some of the chaser cams, and it's kind of a, a rough area to get cell phone service there. We have seen a rotating wall cloud, but not necessarily a tornado. Want to take you up into Kansas now. Some bigger storms up here that could be producing tornadoes, including around Haskell County. And look what's happening near Haskell, just south of Haskell, near Sublet. Large storm here, maybe looking at a little appendage here, but a lot of hail embedded within this storm as well. There's a look at the uh, radar. I'll go ahead and pause that for you so you can see exactly what's happening with this particular storm and it is maybe a little bit of rotation right here uh, near 56 and highway 160 so if you live uh, near Haskell south of Haskell near Sublet you got to take shelter right now this also has had a tornado on it it's barely moving moving southeast very very slowly another storm now uh, up near Finney and Hodgman all right you can see a well-defined hook echo on this check this hook echo out right in there so what you have is inflow coming into that notch right there that little green area that's near nearly precipitation free and it's warm moist air being pulled into the storm wrapping around it that storm moving to the southeast really slowly uh, about uh, 10 15 miles an hour Hallett next in line around 643 so it'll be a while before it gets there even if it gets to that location and notice the outflow here back to the uh, west of that. So we've got a lot of hail off to the north. We've got the hook echo down to the south and look at that rotation. Oh my goodness. That is an incredibly impressive tornado vortex signature right in the middle there. Almost a donut right in the center of that. This is now west of North Roscoe. Storm moving again to the southeast about 15 miles per hour. So if you live uh, say near North Roscoe, even towards South Roscoe, you have to take shelter right away. This is most likely a tornado right in the middle of that entire storm system there. This will come right down down on Highway 156. So uh, please take shelter right away. We're going to follow these very, very closely. But dangerous storms uh, this evening, gentlemen, across Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, multiple locations where we've had tornadoes on the ground. Absolutely, Dee. Thanks, Mike. Well, the effects of the raging floodwaters we saw across Texas certainly going to be long lasting. The lives of hundreds of families never going to be the same. Yeah, for some residents, the loss is confined to material things, but others still don't know the fate of their families and friends. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez is live in Wimberley, a town along the Blanco River that saw homes washed down river. Good evening, Gabe. Good evening. Well, search crews from Texas Task Force 1 and the Army National Guard have scoured some 3,600 acres searching for the missing as well as about 26 river miles. And now even more civilian volunteers are joining the effort. 
A massive search effort is growing. Today, authorities in Hayes County identified another flood victim. 42-year-old Michelle Carey Sharba, one of eight people missing after rising water swept away a vacation home in Wimberley early Sunday morning. But we spoke parents. with her sister and brother-in-law just I before was, the tragic the news. She. My sister um, is my best friend. Um, we're three years apart. She's just the most outgoing, gregarious, sweet, um, wants to be everybody's friend. Kristen Carey Daniel is still searching to. for her parents, Ralph and Sue Carey, her brother-in-law, Randy Sharba, and her nephew, six-year-old Will. Loves to sing songs and make up his own, <laughs> his own words to, to songs. Alan Daniel, Michelle's brother-in-law, today went up in a helicopter, searching with hundreds of volunteers. The Carey family treasured their vacation home along the Blanco River for decades. The only reason we weren't there last weekend was because of scheduling. So, yeah. Around 11 Saturday night, she says her mother texted this picture of the rising water. It was around 1 a.m. officials say the home was swept away, the family's inside. Neighbors say her father had run out to start the SUV, found still running the next morning. When Kristen couldn't reach her parents, she didn't know what to expect, but it wasn't this. She went double down, fell to her knees, crump, and I um, could only imagine what she was going through. We never thought it would take the house, that the house could be knocked over, ever. She has spoken with the lone survivor so far, Jonathan McComb, badly injured and devastated. The search for his wife, Laura, and their two children, six-year-old Andrew and four-year-old Layton, continues. We're going to survive this together as a family. We, um, we have faith that we will get through this, and we're praying for miracles. Adding insult to injury, the search efforts today were hampered by severe weather. And tonight, a flash flood watch is in effect for Central Texas. Back to you. All right, thanks so much, Gabe. We appreciate it. Of course, we know we've got more storms and more rain to talk about in the plains. Let's talk about that forecast out there here across some of these same areas that have been dealing with this rain. Check it out. So the wettest month on record for a few cities, including Oklahoma City, Fort Smith there in Arkansas, and Wichita Falls, Texas, where we picked up over 14 and a half inches of rainfall so far in the month. Fort Smith getting up over 18 inches there. So way over what we have seen previously in the month of May in those three cities. And we've got more to come. Flash flood watches. Those are the areas in the light green, including Austin up towards Oklahoma City. And that flash flood watch actually lasts all the way through the weekend there. And you can see the radar not as lit up here for you in and around Oklahoma City. It's a little bit farther to the west now, but that is expected to change as we work our way through the coming days. Flash flood warning, though, is in place. Pontotoc County there uh, as we work our way across portions of uh, Texas and Oklahoma. And we'll be watching these areas tonight into tomorrow, getting inundated with more showers and storms. Keith? All right, thanks, Alex. We're bringing you some live pictures of a tornado in Canadian Texas right now that is uh, continuing to be a hot spot for us. A lot of chasers there. Funnel cloud obviously going towards the ground. It has roped out to the ground a few times. We'll be right back. Mm, heartburn. No one burns on my watch. Try Alka-Seltzer Heartburn Relief Chews. They work fast and don't taste chalky. Mmm, amazing. I have heartburn. Alka-Seltzer Heartburn Relief Juice. Enjoy the relief. Lowe's presents How to Plan for the Future. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy birthday. Sorry I forgot our anniversary. Happy Mother's Day. Select hanging baskets, now just two for $10 at Lowe's. Welcome to Jurassic World. It's like taking a stroll through the woods. 65 million years ago. We have an asset out of containment. We're safe in here, right? Currently in our area, 83 degrees under cloudy skies. Tonight, cloudy intervals, low 75, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. 
Thursday, partly cloudy, high 85. Winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday night, a few clouds, low 74. Winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Channel's most watched original program. And it just hit us. Is back. This is just the beginning of what's to come. low prices every day. It's not just about having more savings. It's about having more fun. Great get-togethers start with low prices you can trust every day. Nice job, guys. And it'll last, too, because I'm the only paint and primer in one with easy wash formula, which you may find pretty handy someday. Olympic One Paint stands up to 1,500 scrubs, exclusively at Lowe's. Night Live in a brand new bottle. Summer on. Amore. Subito. The all new Fiat 500X crossover. Bigger, more powerful, and ready for action. Welcome back to the Weather Channel as we cover the ongoing effects from the historic rainfall and flooding. Today, an area southwest of Dallas had to be evacuated due to concerns over a dam. Workers in Ellis County found water spilling over the top and felt there could be a serious breach. Good news now, though, they no longer believe that area is in imminent danger. So what changed our Dave Malkoff was out there and held up the story in just about 10 minutes. Hey, all sorts of infrastructure that's being put to the test with the raging floodwaters in Hayes County. Our crew got an up close look at the damage left by the force of the raging Blanco River. That river went up a couple of times there, 28 feet, I think it was in two hours, ended up three times above flood stage, wiping out entire bridges. Reagan Medji shows us what's left behind. As the Weather Channel team continues to move through East Texas, an area ravaged by flooding, we ended up on Fisher Store Road, and there was a blocked area. The bridge was out, and we didn't really know what that meant. Take a look. We decided to come down this road uh, with the deputy sheriff just to kind of take a look at what exactly this area looks like. This is the Blanco River that is running through, and um, the river crested at 43 feet, three times its flood stage, somewhere Sunday early morning. And when it did that, the force of the water was so strong that it knocked out this bridge. This is a main bridge to get to uh, different places throughout the area. As I said, we were on our way to San Marcos. And uh, we got stopped. So if we pan to the left, you're going to see that not only did the river just grow in size, look how wide it got. Look at all those trees just bent in half, bent down to the ground. That's the look at what the Blanco, the Blanco River looked like at one point. And now it just left destruction in its path. So at one point, you might be seeing some kind of ash, almost looks like snow falling from the sky. Uh, we were told that some area residents are doing what they can to get rid of the, the tree branches and they're burning them. So there's a smell of smoke in the air. Um, so we also want to look over this area. This is a house. Uh, it moved quite a bit. Uh, we were told by a deputy sheriff in the area that it wasn't there exactly, but it got lifted and then smashed against those trees. So the devastation continues here. We're in Hayes County, uh, and you can just see behind me that this is just part of what the Blanco River did and all of the other flooding waters here in East Texas. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Reagan. And uh, let's take a look at the pattern here going forward, but let's start with what caused a lot of this problem, which is that we had a ton of rainfall here over the past month or so. So you take a look at the beginning of May. Alan, if you could, could you advance my uh, Max too? Because I don't think 
I have the right clicker for it. But anyways, we had a lot of rain in May. There we go across much of Texas and Oklahoma. Take a look at these totals. Almost 20 inches of rain since the beginning of May. So what that did is saturate the ground and set the stage for every thunderstorm that came through to have the threat at least of some flooding rain. So over the past couple of weeks, we've had this pattern where we have these disturbances coming through and giving us a little extra kick. Take a look at all these rivers that are still in flood stage. So moderate here is the red major is in the purple. So pretty much all of them across Texas and Oklahoma are having problems. So there's your recent pattern moisture pulled in for the north and persistent jet stream dip that's allowed these systems to come in and just trigger enough showers and thunderstorms to put some of these areas over the top. But there will be a change coming next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, probably into much of next week. We get a little ridge here in the middle part of the country, allowing a much needed extended period of dry weather. Remember they were in a drought. This helped, but caused a lot of damage in the meantime. Take a look at Oklahoma City going in the right direction. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday back to sunshine. All three of those days, and more importantly, there's no rain left. Alex? Or in the midst of a severe weather season, but hurricane season. That is knocking on the door. Got some activity out there to talk about. Oh, this audit will take days. What a headache. Actually, I don't have a headache anymore. Excedrin like, really does work fast. In fact, for some, relief starts in just 15 minutes. Excedrin. Wow, that was fast. And just like that, the snow is gone. And off you go. And every frozen second spent willing this day to come is just a warm, fading memory. All we need to sell Strongbow Hard Cider is ice. And an award for best tasting hard cider. Have you got the shot yet? Remember that thing about keeping your face behind the award? Strongbow. Thanks for the ride around Norfolk. And I just wanted to say Geico is proud to have served the military for over 75 years. Roger that. Cap is waiting to give you a tour of the Wisconsin now. Oh. Could have parked a little bit closer. It's going to be dark by the time I get there. Geico, proudly serving the military for over 75 years. They may claim good performance, but typically cordless vacuums deliver weak suction. The issue originates here. To make their vacuum smaller, most others make their motor smaller and less powerful. But at Dyson, we've invented the small but powerful V6 digital motor, spinning at up to 110,000 RPM giving our latest cordless vacuums twice the suction of all others. Bridgestone is changing the game in tire performance. So will our neck when we get to the store when he's out of diapers. Well, to be clear, they're not for me. They're for my son. So. <laughs> we should probably go. We switched Will's tires to Bridgestone's revolutionary drive guard tires. Oh, those look sharp. It's okay. Our drive guard tires are engineered to take a puncture and drive up to 50 miles on a flat. So, no side of the road. Well, that's good because the side of the road is dangerous, especially since we're going commando. We're? What commando means? Where you get your weather matters. This is a large and dangerous tornado. That's why we get real local the moment you need it. We are live in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, Florida. Real accurate. This is round one of the severe storms that are coming through. From real experts on the ground. That is a gust front for you right there in dusty Texas. Wow. Where you get your weather matters. This is basically what makes the Weather Channel Keep the great. Weather Channel on. Here at the Weather Channel. The Weather Channel is out in full force today. Only the weather. Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line has excited cruise rates for Florida residents and visitors on many cruise dates with prices of just $149 for interior cabins and $169 for ocean view cabins. Your two-night cruise includes delicious dining, great live shows, lots of fun, lots of pampering, and an exciting day in the Bahamas. Call 800-814-7100 to book your Bahamas cruise from just $149. 800-814-7100. If you're not happy with how your allergy medicine treats your congestion, rethink relief with Nasacort Allergy 24 Hour. Unlike antihistamines that target only one cause of your symptoms, Nasacort stops more, relieving the worst nasal allergy symptoms, even congestion, for 24 hours. It's non addictive and has no harsh taste, and unlike Flonase, it's scent and alcohol free. And it's available over the counter at full prescription strength. Rethink your relief with Nasacort. It stops more of what makes you miserable.
Currently in our area, 82 degrees with light rain. Tonight, cloudy intervals, low 75, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 85, winds east northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday night, a few clouds, low 74, winds east northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome back. As we start talking tropics, yeah, that's right. Time now to look towards the tropics for that hurricane activity, a tropical cyclone activity. We've actually started the season in the East Pacific already, and the season in the Atlantic will be starting in on June 1st, or almost there. And in the East Pacific, we've got some activity ongoing. A couple of Invest areas, one sitting out here far out in the Pacific, Invest 91E, and then we've got Invest 92E. This one's a little bit more organized and a little bit closer uh, to land now. There. So two well, areas that are worth watching, uh, the one closest to land where the possible developmental area is right now south of the Baja Peninsula. But that's an area that we'll be watching very, very closely. In fact, the National Hurricane Center giving this thing about a 90% chance of developing. So there it is. A lot of shower and thunderstorm activity associated with that area of low pressure. Uh, right now, winds estimated to be about 30 miles per hour with the central pressure sitting at 1,008 millibars. And again, a 90% chance of seeing this thing develop into a tropical cyclone. So a pretty good bet that this is going to happen uh, for us. Of course, the question is, where is it going to be heading? Well, computer models sort of locking in on this thing. And notice it's not going to be moving very quickly. Not in a rush to head anywhere by Saturday, 7 o'clock. Still out here over the open waters of the Pacific. But you notice that turn on off towards the north. So we'll be watching very, very closely as we head uh, through the weekend there. Meanwhile, of course, we'll be also watching what happens in the Atlantic. New numbers in now on the, the seasonal forecast from NOAA. Now you look at the average here for us, 12 total named storms, six hurricanes, category three or higher. Those would be major three. Well, NOAA's numbers well below the average when you talk about total named all the way down to category three or higher. And the same for our official numbers from the Weather Channel, indicating the current thinking is a below average season. But regardless, you want to be prepared equally each season. Keith? All right, thanks, Alex. All right, let's go to Mike Bettis. We're getting some feisty storms out there on the radar. And also, Mike, they're very slow moving. They are crawling, Keith, and they are putting down some tornadoes, one in Texas and one in Kansas, and very impressive on the radar and hardly any movement. So if you've got a tornado warning, I am, this is the, this one boy by Canadian Texas has been impressive to say at least, been sticking around forever, it seems like. Hemphill and Liscombe counties under tornado warnings right now until 7 o'clock. Look at this rotation. It's gotten more impressive here in a last couple of minutes. Chaser cams have been showing generally a rotating wall cloud, but right in there would be the tornado right between the blues and the red. So we're getting a lot more gate to gate shear here and a tornado couplet right just to the west, I would say, of Canadian. There's what it looks like live. Chasers have been on this. It's hardly moved. It's moving uh, maybe east. Uh, at about 10 miles an hour. So Canadian Texas, this is where it, uh, this is where it's at. And again, no, uh, no tornado. We've seen a funnel a couple times, seen a tornado a couple times. Uh, so just watch this one very, very carefully. Uh, Hemp Hill and Liscombe counties in the Panhandle of Texas, currently under a tornado warning. As the uh, camera pans around here a little bit, there it may actually be a funnel right there. He was actually pointed in the wrong direction with his camera. We've got a we've got a potential tornado in progress here. Funnel cloud that's reaching down from that wall cloud. This is Canadian uh, Texas. This is a live video from Chaser Cams out here in the pain handle of Texas. Been wide. Well, you can see the really strong rotation around that uh, funnel cloud now. So we've been seeing this on the radar. We've been looking at it just at the bottom of your screen here, just below where you see me. You see the blue and the red and the yellow right next to each other. That is the tornado. It would be right in the middle of all that. And it's uh, easy to pick out there on the, well, it's getting even better, I think. Well, that might be very close to be producing a tornado. The great news is I look down there at the uh, ground there. 
Chaser Cam may have been spotty cell phone coverage out here. At times they've had tornadoes and haven't been able to broadcast them because they've had spotty cell phone coverage as they stream here live. But you take a look at those images, you can definitively see a rotating wall cloud and a funnel down from the bottom of that cloud. Again, Canadian Texas is where we're looking right now. A tornado probably just to the west of town. Hardly any buildings out here. I see a couple of power poles there just to the right of the screen. Don't see a lot of buildings out there. I'm not sure if that's a building off to the left-hand side of the screen or not, but you're looking live at a large supercell thunderstorm in the panhandle of Texas with a uh, very pronounced uh, couplet on radar and the live pictures do indeed prove that it is a rotating wall cloud with a funnel that extends from it. We're going to keep our eyes peeled on this one. Got another tornado in progress across Kansas. We'll have more on both of these when we come back right here on Weather Center Live as you watch tornado coverage in Tornado Alley. This storm coverage is brought to you by Duracell. Visit Duracell.com to learn how Duracell Power Forward provides relief to those in need. I've seen hurricanes, floods, I've seen tornadoes. We give out Duracell batteries after the worst happens. And when the power's out for days, we stay with them. You might say they lost everything, but that's not what I see. I see a different kind of power. I saw it in Ruth, Adam, Tom. It's the power they have inside of them. The power to move forward. At Duracell, we believe that's the power that never, ever goes out. Linux makes the quietest system you can find. So even though it's the most powerful force in your home, it won't sound like it is. For more information, contact your local Linux dealer. Working on my feet all day gave me pain here in my lower back. But now I step on this machine and get my number, which matches my Dr. Scholl's custom fit orthotic inserts. Now I get immediate relief from my foot pain. My lower back pain. Find a machine at drscholls.com. Just like all moms, I'm always concerned about my children's well-being. But sometimes they get sick. Sometimes they get hurt. That's why I'm so grateful we have children's hospitals. Because when any child needs a miracle, They'll do everything in their power to make one happen, with our support. Please join me in giving sick and injured children every chance to get better. Put your money where the miracles are. Give to your Children's Miracle Network Hospital. How about over there? What does it mean to have an unlimited mileage warranty on a certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz? What does it mean to drive as far as you want for up to three years and be covered. It means your odometer is there to record the memories. During the Mercedes-Benz Certified Pre-Owned Sales Event, now through June 1st, you'll get complimentary prepaid maintenance and receive your first two months payments on us, only at your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. 14 clubs. That's what they tell us a legal golf bag can hold. And while that leaves a little room for balls and tees, it doesn't leave room for much else. There's no room left for deadlines or conference calls. Not a single pocket to hold the stress of the day or the to-do list of tomorrow. Only 14 clubs. Pick out the right one and drive it right down the middle. A pure Michigan. Your trip begins at michigan.org. Everyone. Remain. Calm. Currently in our area, 82 degrees with light rain. Tonight, cloudy intervals, low 75, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 85, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday night, a few clouds, low 74, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook.
Weather Channel's most watched original program. And it just hit us. Is back. This is just the beginning of what's to come. Welcome back to Weather Center Live. Water levels are now lower, and the extent of the damage is coming into focus after some catastrophic flooding into Texas and Oklahoma. At this point, we know that the storms brought historic flooding responsible for deaths of 23 people, but right now, uh, we're getting some video in here. This is Canadian Texas, and this is on Instagram. We knew that there was a confirmed tornado out there. We're continuing to get reports and video. We had a storm chaser out there live taking a look at it. It was just trying to put, produce another funnel cloud down to the ground. This storm system has been over Canadian Texas for hours now, and we are getting some word in from the sheriff that there was some damage and uh, an undetermined amount of injuries to a drilling uh, structure out there in Canadian Texas, so we'll keep you updated on that. And meteorologist Mike Bettis will join us from the lab in a few minutes for an update on that storm threat. First, though, let's go over to Alex. All right, Keith. Well, one of eight people missing following flash flooding Saturday night in Wimberley, Texas, was found today in a body of a 43 year old Michelle Carey Charbra uh, has now been recovered and she was one of nine people inside a home on the Blanco River that was swept downstream by floodwaters. Her husband and their four year old son, along with her parents, are still missing. One person survived and is recovering, but his wife and two young children are also still missing. Now, despite the immense sadness in these towns affected by death and so much destruction, there is still hope that survivors may be found. NBC's Jay Gray is live in the town of Wimberley for us tonight. And Jay, what is the feeling there uh, across the area with all the uh, just incredible devastation? Yeah, it's overwhelming, I think, for a lot of the people here still trying to come to grips with what's happened. And I want to show you why. Look at some of the devastation that they are dealing with here. You can see debris piles that are uh, lifted 20 feet off the ground, just full of splintered trees and parts of homes and then homes that have been washed away from their slabs entirely as we come back across. You'll see that just behind me here. This home pushed more than 100 yards from where it originally stayed here. All of this as they continue to try and find those who are lost right now. Mother Nature's relentless attack continued across Texas today with more rain in areas already ravaged by the water. It doesn't take much. We are saturated, folks. The, the isolated thunderstorms could cause immediate local flooding. Still, responders continue to work along the Blanco River, expanding their grid and holding out hope they'll find survivors. We are still in search and rescue mode. We are still looking for viable victims. As crews begin the cleanup, pulling away debris where they can, sifting through what little is left behind in an area literally swallowed by the river. Wimberley uh, has uh, multiple homes with no, they're down to the foundation. Uh, it's a pretty devastating scenario. It's a scenario playing out in Houston as well, where homes are now islands, communities isolated, or even worse, after the storms there. You see the homes and lives and dreams of uh, Houstonians crushed, literally, uh, by the power of the water. Water that's destroyed just about everything in its path. Yeah, and that water, at least in the Blanco River, back within its banks, that's the great news here. Look, it's a beautiful evening, uh, some sunshine, we've got a bit of a breeze. There's been rain, though, throughout the morning that hampered the recovery efforts both here and in Houston. The forecast, as you guys well know, calls for more rain over the next several days. That's the latest live here in Wimberley. Keith, back to you. All right, thank you, Jay. Yeah, unfortunately, a perfect segue to our next segment, which is to talk about the fact that we will break out of this, but it's not going to be until next week when things really, really change. So here are your flood alerts right now. Uh, Austin on a flash flood watch in through Oklahoma City and then a flood warning in through parts of uh, eastern Oklahoma. Now, this is better spatially. If you were with us a couple of days ago, uh, this entire area had flash flood watches in effect because of the saturation that had occurred previously. But if you look at the flash flood warnings, they follow right along the rivers in most cases here. So that's where we're having those rivers still cresting in a lot of cases. And then there is some urban uh, flooding as well. But for the most part, it's been along these rivers and streams that we've seen the biggest problems. All right, the radar right now, it's a double edged sword. The positive is there's not as much coverage of showers and thunderstorms that we've seen over the past couple of days. The negative is the steering flow is very weak. So if you look at this closely, these aren't moving very much. That means it has a chance to drop a lot of rainfall in one spot 
spot because that searing flow doesn't move it along very quickly. That's what we saw in Canadian Texas still ongoing. We've had that same storm over them basically for the past couple of hours. All right, as we head through Friday here, the showers and thunderstorms still continue. Severe area shifts off to the north a little bit, but we still have the rainfall. Saturday, scattered thunderstorms, so not rain in this entire area, but a chance of these showers and thunderstorms. And then we do get a little ridge in here starting on Sunday, but really taking over Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and that's when we finally get things to settle down. So rainfall through Friday, we still have enough to cause some problems. Again, remember, it's all about the fact that the ground was saturated previously, so what we call flash flood guidance, the amount of rain necessary to create flash flooding, is pretty low still. So you take a look at these bullseyes, still two to three inches of possibility, widespread one to two inches of rain. So Houston here looking at a chance of showers and thunderstorms, and they know very well that some of these may not hit the city, but if they do and they drop even an inch of rain, we could have problems again in Houston after what happened on Monday night. And again, things there are a little bit slower to, to uh, settle down, but we should be in better shape by at least mid next week. Alex. All right, Keith. Well, we also have a strong storm, a threat to talk about. They've already fired up tonight across portions of the Texas Panhandle. Some of this video shot by storm chaser Roger Hill. This was earlier in the day in Canadian Texas. Keith was just talking about Canadian Texas still at this hour under a tornado warning. Now earlier what we're looking at here, you can see the funnel uh, that's trying to extend its way down towards the ground and look at that rain shaft as well. there, just to the right of that incredible site there. Well, we're going to get an update on what is happening right now with Mike Bettis, who is in the lab and Mike, that storm still ongoing there around a uh, Canadian. It's like the Energizer Bunny it just keeps going and going and going here, Alex. Now, obviously, we've got some real issues here uh, near Canadian. This storm has barely budged in about three hours now, and it's produced multiple tornadoes. In fact, we have uh, some incredible shots uh, that were shot on Instagram of it, and we'll show it to you here in just a second. But notice where the warnings all are from Texas up through Oklahoma and up through Kansas. We'll zoom right down into this one. This is Liscum and uh, also uh, Hemp Hill counties. This is right in the town of Canadian, by the way, and the storm has been hovering just to the west of town. I'm going to show you the uh, couplet here, the uh, velocities on the radar. A green, bluish colors, that's a wind that's coming toward the radar. Then the red colors going away from the radar. So right in the middle there is where the tornado uh, would be. We've been looking at a rotating wall cloud for about the past 15 uh, minutes or so. But I think we have some video of this particular storm and the big cone tornado that it produced. Check that out. This shot on Instagram uh, by uh, Danny Olson here. And this is incredible stuff, but it didn't last long. A big cone tornado like this was actually fairly short-lived, but it's been cycling and producing uh, multiple tornadoes uh, with this. It's been uh, pretty impressive to see nonetheless. Uh, look at a time lapse. Just uh, could look at that all day long, huh? But a real danger in around Canadians. So if you live uh, near Canadian, the town of Canadian, the panhandle of Texas, please take shelter and stay uh, inside until all is clear. I want to take you up into Kansas. Some impressive storms up here as well. Multiple severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings. Finney and Hodgman counties uh, are still under a tornado warning. It's been reissued. This was a really impressive storm. Strong outflow down to the south here. A tornado possibly rain wrapped basically near the Hallett area. You can see we've got some broad rotation. We rotate this and um, we loop it and you can see we had a really good spin there just northwest of Hallett. It may have weakened uh, somewhat but it looks like we'll be uh, looking at a tornado potentially in progress here for the next maybe uh, uh, 15 to 20 minutes. There's a look at it in three dimensions. You can see a lot of lightning with that hail being thrown out the front end of that with an inflow notch that was generally right in the middle of that, that warm air wrapping into the hook echo. Another Another tornado warning, by the way, uh, has been issued near Scott City, including uh, Wichita County, by the way. And we'll take a look at that little appendage hanging down there. A uh, weak hook echo there. And you can see maybe a little bit of rotation in there as well. Storm also moving very, very slowly here off to the southeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Keith, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Mike. Hey, sometimes when floodwaters recede, you're left with unexpected debris. Look at this. What do you think of that? Gator. Craziness, right? <laughs> wow. I tell you, as a Georgia Bulldog, I want nothing to do with anything Gator related. So keep me away from that. Have you ever seen the movie The Other Guys? Gator don't play that. <laughs>
75. Winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 85. Winds east northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday night, a few clouds, low 74. Winds east northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. low prices every day. It's not just about having more savings. It's about having more fun. Great get-togethers start with low prices you can trust every day. Beautiful job. I knew you had it in you. And it was easy because of what I have in me. You know, the color-rich technology and all-climate protection package? It penetrates deep for long-lasting protection and beauty. And I'm the only one who's got it. Olympic Elite. For exceptional beauty and protection that lasts. Olympic. Simply done. Exclusively at Lowe's. Stop by Lowe's and save $5 per gallon on Olympic's best paints and stains. Just another way Olympic makes it easy every step of the way. Advanced Design makes it easy to protect your dog or cat from fleas and ticks. Discover Soresto. With the performance you expect from topicals in a non-greasy collar, Soresto provides protection against fleas and ticks for eight months. Soresto. Are you up for whatever? Don't answer. Grab a Bud Light and show it. Try new things. Make new friends. Explore new places. Find the fun around every corner. Better yet, be the fun. Laugh, dance, spin, jump. Make a single weekend last a lifetime and keep it going with a crisp, refreshing Bud Light. The perfect beer for whatever happens. If you're an adult with type 2 diabetes and your A1C is not at goal with certain diabetes pills or daily insulin, your doctor may be talking about adding medication to help lower your A1C. Ask your doctor if adding once a week Tansium is right for you. Once a week, Tansium is an injectable prescription medicine that may improve blood sugar in adults with type 2 diabetes, along with diet and exercise. Once a week, Tansium works by helping your body release its own natural insulin when it's needed. Tansium is not recommended as the first medicine to treat diabetes or in people with severe stomach or intestinal problems. Tansium is not insulin. It is not used to treat type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis and has not been studied with mealtime insulin. Do not take Tansium if you or your family have a history of medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, or if you're allergic to Tansium or any of its ingredients. Stop using Tansium and call your doctor right away if you experience symptoms of a serious allergic reaction, which may include itching, rash, or difficulty breathing. If you have signs of pancreatitis, such as severe stomach pain that will not go away and may move to your back, with or without vomiting. Or if you have symptoms of thyroid cancer, which include a lump or swelling in your neck, hoarseness, trouble swallowing, or shortness of breath. Before using Tansium, talk to your doctor about your medical conditions, all medicines you're taking, if you're nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant, and about low blood sugar and how to manage it. Taking Tansium with a sulfonyl urea or insulin increases your risk for low blood sugar. Common side effects with Tansium include diarrhea, nausea, injection site reactions, cough, back pain, and cold or flu symptoms. Some serious side effects can lead to dehydration, which may cause kidney failure. Ask your doctor if adding once a week Tansium is right for you. Go to Tansium.com to learn if you may be eligible to receive Tansium free for 12 months. Make every week a Tansium week. You can't always be there to protect her down the road. Make sure the tires she's riding on will. With a revolutionary Michelin Premier tire, even as it wears down over time, thanks to Evergrip technology. The Michelin Premier tire, safe when new, safe when worn. When you set the world in motion, the Ram Pro.
ProMaster van. New Ram ProMaster City. Purpose built to help you run the town. Ram. Well, the town of Wharton, Texas, sits 60 miles southwest of Houston, right on the Colorado River, which is rising at a pretty good clip. Tuesday morning, the river was under 14 feet. Right now, it's over 36, and the mayor is asking residents today to begin evacuating. Public Information Officer Paula Favors joins us on the phone. And Paula, 36 feet right now, flood stage 39, river expected to crest on Friday. What's going through your mind right now? Well, our main concern is for the residents of Wharton on the west side. Uh, that is the area that will flood first, and they have put out the voluntary uh, notice. So residents can now start to prepare and uh, make the decision to get out safely before we see the water rising any further. So uh, why voluntary instead of mandatory, and what would it take for you to go over to the mandatory side of evacuations? Well, right now, there's a portion of the of the west side of town that we're looking at at the projection with the uh, National Weather Service um, that will have some flooding. Now, the mayor is ultimately the decision maker on if it would go to a mandatory evacuation. And above all, our concern is the residents are safe and uh, their families, their pets, and uh, as well as their belongings. We want to make sure that we have a, enough lead time that they're able to get out, get to a local shelter, or even get to uh, family members that may live in other parts of the town or maybe in another city. Have you ever seen the Colorado rise this high in Wharton? Absolutely. Um, we've had several instances um, of flooding uh, as recent as 2004, and we had flooding in 2008. At those times, it reached around 48 feet. And currently, the weather um, center is uh, projecting 45.8. Do you think, Paula, that what happened in Houston just a few days ago will help at all with your voluntary evacuation? Do you think people maybe take it a little bit more seriously because of recent history with these systems? We are hoping that everyone takes it very serious and uh, gets their belongings secure, as well as uh, the folks that may be homebound if they have relatives here that they're helping them get to a shelter or helping them get to um, their own home and uh, just making sure that everybody is secure. There should be no reason for um, any type of, of loss of life at this point. I agree with that and we wish you the best of luck. Pa Paula, thank you very much. That uh, river again will be cresting on Friday. Alex? All right. Thanks so much, Keith. Meanwhile, we'll take a trip through the nation over the next few days and while well, we've got more rain in these areas that just don't need any more and some of those storms could be strong and severe right across the plains down into Texas. Also the chance for storms anywhere across the deep south basically and into the northeast as well. Muggy conditions with upper 80s around New York City could see some storms but look what happens Friday. Boston goes from the 80s to 69 degrees. A much cooler time there but focus in the middle of the country as our severe storm threat shifts a little bit farther to the north and the east into the western Great Lakes. By Saturday we'll be tracking this cold front now sagging south and eastbound. Chow Hours of more storms to deal with Oklahoma City down towards Dallas. Out ahead of that, we've got warm and muggy conditions to deal with upper 80s around the ATL. And on Sunday, chance for a few showers and storms across the southeast and into the northeast as well. While behind this, we cool things down significantly. 58 now, you're high in Chicago as we round out the weekend. Monday now, as we all head back to work after the weekend, showers here across the northwest, but it's a, a quieter time, at least across the heartland. We'll take that brief break. Ohio Valley into the south Monday looking for some showers and storms. It looks like that'll continue into Tuesday, but a couple of dry days now to enjoy here right in the middle of the country, particularly across the Southern Plain. Did you know only 1% of supplements have earned the USP mark? An independent certification for quality and purity. I recommend Nature Made because they've earned the most of any brand. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended letter vitamin brand. Make the cash call and ask for the do-over refi. If you refinanced your mortgage in the last 18 months, we can redo it at a lower rate, like today's 2.875% rate and APR with no closing costs. Just call 855-890-CASH. Where you get your weather 
matters. This is a large and dangerous tornado. That's why we get real local the moment you need it. We are live in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, Florida. Real accurate. This is round one of the severe storms that are coming through. From real experts on the ground. That is a gust front for you right there in dusty Texas. Wow. Where you get your weather matters. This is basically what makes the Weather Channel Keep the great. Weather Channel on. Here at the Weather Channel. The Weather Channel is out in full force today. Only the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 81 degrees under cloudy skies with windy conditions. Tonight, cloudy intervals, low 75, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 85, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday night, a few clouds, low 74, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. out to put in Dr. Scholl's Active Series insoles. They help reduce wear and tear on my legs because they have triple zone protection and reduce shock by 40%. So I feel like I'm ready to take on anything. All we need to sell Strongbow Hard Cider is ice and an award for best tasting hard cider. Have you got the shot yet? Remember that thing about keeping your face behind the award? Strongbow. Deep in the dark, untouched recesses of your engine is power you never knew it could produce. And vapor can set it free. New Stable 360 Performance unleashes an exclusive vapor technology that rises above the fuel line to protect your engine where other additives can't. To help keep your engine running cleaner, leaner, smoother, and stronger than ever. The next level of performance is in the vapor. Stable 360 Performance. Welcome to Jurassic World. Oh, good. You ever wonder why there was a job opening? As you know, people want everything bigger. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. We have an asset out of containment. Get the kids someplace safe. We need to cover up the smell of that scented lotion. You didn't have to put it on your face. <laughs> Ready PG-13. One look at that Red Baron pizza, and you're gonna love it from the first bite to the last. Because a perfect pizza requires a perfect crust. The sauce commands your attention. The cheese begs you to savor every bite. The pepperoni declares you have reached pizza nirvana. And that last slice? What's it worth to you? A perfect crust means a better pizza. Red Baron, love at first bite. The authentic taste of a brick oven pizza. Now available from Red Baron. Bam, 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 bam. Here we go. I told you we're going to bust out of this drought. Keep watching with us this morning because we're all watching history together. Welcome back to Weather Center Live. We have tornado watch in effect until 10 o'clock central time across western parts of Oklahoma and northern parts of Texas, also western Kansas. And we have a new tornado warning there as well. Take a look at the general fields of thunderstorms here and a couple of boxes in red that's indicating your tornado warning. This is the newest one here. And uh, this is across southern parts of Kansas. Uh, some good news is that uh, it is only Doppler indicated and the other is that uh, I looked at the population and it's not a huge population, but if you live here, take shelter as it moves off to the south and east, and uh, this is to the south of Haskell. Here's a look at your velocities. We look for couplets, and I don't see a huge one, but it could be that this name is in the way here. But in general, it looks like there's enough rod rotation to put down a uh, tornado at least, and this is a severe thunderstorm warning in there as well. All right, let's take a look at some of the other thunderstorms ongoing here. A couple more tornado warn systems. This is Dodge City, just to orient you a little bit. And we have one valve until 7.15. Again, the general motion of these off to the south and east. That's a pretty good looking hook echo there. That's what you look for in the radar as it moves off to the south and east. Possibility of a tornado there. Also a tornado here. Uh, also 
also you can see the outflow boundary for these thunderstorms right here. See that thin line, that's the air coming out from the thunderstorms. And this one bounced off seven o'clock. Uh, Hallett, North Roscoe, and South Roscoe are spots that need to be under uh, the gun for these possibility of this tornado here. The hook echo on the left one looking a little bit stronger, but all the tornado warnings should be taken seriously. And here's a look at your velocity in a broad rotation in this particular storm system and a pretty good looking rotation back here on that sell off to the west. Alex? All right, thanks so much, Keith. Well, let's check out some of the video that's had a lot of us talking today. A tornado caught on security footage in Beaver Creek, Ohio yesterday. Look at that quickly spinning on through, moving from left to right there on your screen, tossing up even debris into the air. And then just like that, it's gone. All right, so I'm in the lab now with meteorologist Mike Bettison. No doubt about it, this thing's yeah. had us all sort of buzzing today. Wild stuff, yeah. uh, for sure. I mean, it's a tiny little skinny tornado, mm -hmm. right? Comes right through that parking lot, hits a couple of cars, uh, you know, tossed some cars and flipped them, went over a Waffle House, a Mexican restaurant, a workout facility, and then into a neighborhood. And I mean, truly perfectly framed on that security camera. It lasted less than a minute, mm -hmm. and almost its entire life cycle was captured right there on the security cam. Tiny little thing, though. I mean, that's, and it's got kind of a personality of its that, own. It's that. just kind of, it kind of reminds me of one of those, you know, um, things you see at the car dealership that just kind of waves <laughs> around. Like, that's what it looks like, right? Uh, thankfully, it, uh, you know, this is a really populated part of Dayton. Mm -hmm. About 45,000 people uh, live in Beaver Creek, and it did, a, it did a decent amount of damage in that parking lot, you know, spinning the cars around. And so, as car's not a safe place to be in a tornado, downing some trees. But believe it or not, Alex, I don't know if a lot of people know this, and you, and you know this, but cars are not a damage indicator on the EF scale. So that, you know, they go out there and they do the damage survey. They're looking for structural damage yeah. to a standard building, um, a, a power poles, trees, something that's stationary. They don't do it for cars, so as impressive as the damage looks, it's not used to rate the tornado. All right. I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's EF1 is what it was. It is an EF1 rated. tornado. Uh, no stranger to tornadoes here in Greene County. This is just outside of Dayton. Really short tornado track, by the way. It was only half a mile long, only 70 yards wide, uh, and Less 105 mile field. park winds. Less than a football field. Um, uh, we, we've seen tornadoes smaller than that, but when you're seeing the pictures there, it is a really <laughs> tiny little storm. Now, in the history of Greene County, Ohio, they've had about 16 tornadoes since good record keeping back from 1950. But one thing that really stands out about Greene County, Ohio, the infamous Xenia mm. tornado. You know, Beaver Creek and Xenia only about to eight miles apart. That was the benchmark of tornadoes from that big 1974 super outbreak. Um, so then that one really, you know, did a number on Xenia. And, and until we had the more Oklahoma tornadoes, or until we had Joplin, that's the one that everyone talked about. And those are the images. I mean, stunning, still from 1974. Look at that. Wow, 1974, looking back on that. And again, a very powerful uh, tornado that rolled its way through. Wow. That was, you know, that was the big super outbreak. It was the benchmark of all outbreaks, right? And that was the one tornado that uh, had done the most damage out of all those tornadoes, the one there in uh, Xenia. And it was a multi-vortex tornado, came right through town. Uh, in Greene County, it killed 36 people, did about half a billion dollars worth of damage. Injured, by the way, more than a thousand people. Wow. Uh, so this was, you know, this was way back in the infancy of tornado forecasting and tornado warning sirens and all that. But uh, amazing to see, you know, the Green County actually has a history of tornadoes. So there it is again, just a few miles from Xenia, and that one tracked all the way up toward the Springfield area and right near I-70. That was on April 3rd, 1974. All right, so we have had some storms today, as uh, Keith was showing us. We have some more storms tomorrow, Alex, and it's very similar locations through the Panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma, back up through Western Kansas. This is a lot of chasers will uh, be out here again. And Western Kansas is a great place to chase. It's nice and flat out there. You can see forever. Uh, Oklahoma, Texas Panhandles, we get a tour count of three tomorrow. And even as we go into Friday, I think we've got another chance of uh, tornadoes. But it now spreads up to the Midwest. And we've now, you know, later in the season, this is an area that really starts to light up. So Chicago, Green Bay, Milwaukee, maybe toward uh, Grand Rapids could be watching for tornadoes. Torcon of three. There's Torcons of three extend all the way back down through the southern plains. So more active weather to track here. It seems like, of course, we're in that time of the year we where are. it happens. So we'll be here tracking it all for you. We certainly appreciate you joining us tonight. We got one more thing after the break. Currently in our area, 80 degrees under mostly cloudy skies with windy conditions.
tonight. Cloudy intervals, low 75. Winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 85. Winds east northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday night, a few clouds, low 74. Winds east northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome back. Well, we have some flooding concerns still. Flash flood watches into Austin, Oklahoma City as well. Fort Smith under a flash flood or flood warning. We've seen a lot of these over the past couple of days and obviously some big problems in Austin and Houston. Uh, good news, bad news. Good news is there isn't as much coverage with the thunderstorms as far as the rainfall. However, they are slow movers, so any rain we get uh, could be sitting over the same areas. Also, a couple of tornado warnings within here. Mostly Doppler indicator, though we have seen in Canadian Texas, uh, a couple of tornadoes have touched down there through the day. So as we head into tomorrow, still the same severe weather area and scattered showers and thunderstorms out ahead of it. As we head into Friday, that area shifts a little bit farther off to the north. Still showers and storms down across the Gulf Coast. And on Saturday, down. Dallas, Shreveport, Houston, San Antonio, all a chance, and Memphis as well. We do turn the corner as we head into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but first we have this amount of rainfall to get through, one to two inches. All right, Strangest Weather on Earth, up next. In snow-covered mountains, eerie figures haunt the landscape. They look like monsters. Pretty spooky. A mega windstorm blows in more than a little dust. Oh, my God. It's a big mess. I hope we don't see this again. One of the weirdest places on Earth where you can drive through the sky. From out of nowhere, a strange snowstorm hits. It's total whiteout in minutes. Wow. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And get ready to witness weather at its strangest and fastest. to the wild world of weather, where you'll see nature go nuts. Extraordinary events stranger than anything Hollywood can dream up. We discover how and why these crazy conditions happen. Whoa! <laughs> you won't believe your eyes. This is the strangest weather on Earth. San Diego, California, October 2010. A fighter jet roars across the sky. Suddenly, there's a burst of white surrounding the wings. The crowds watch in amazement. This isn't an engine malfunction, and the jet isn't about to explode. By slowing the footage down, this amazing vision becomes clear. As the plane approaches the speed of sound, it is momentarily engulfed by a blast of cloud. This is strange weather at its fastest. Meteorologist Steph Golter explains exactly how this bizarre cloud is formed. To form a sonic boom cloud, you need two things, really. You need a lot of moisture in the air, and you also need a plane traveling really, really fast. As the plane's hurtling along and getting faster and faster, the air ahead of the wing is all becoming really compressed, but behind it is all stretching out, and that allows the pressure here to drop. That allows the air to expand, and as it expands, it cools. And that cooling allows the water vapor to condense. And that's why the cloud forms. It's the sudden change in pressure from high to low that creates this cloud formation. Steph demonstrates exactly how this pressure change works. So we can imagine this to be our atmosphere then. And inside we've got some air and we've also got some moisture as well. Now we can pretend that...